to describe the hell of trying to stay alive under such conditions, strung out on amphetamines and amphetamines and barbiturates. You see, it's a vicious cycle. The amphetamines to get me up, the barbiturates to bring me down. And, um, and all in concert, I started, when I started drinking in beer, along with the amphetamines, I'd drink about four or five a night, but I got up to 12, 14, or a case a night. And I would take it to the concert with me. I want to get just about that high off the ground before I'd go on stage. Sometime I'd misjudge how high I was, you know? And I'd get on stage and I was a wreck. The Grand Ole Opry banned you at one time, didn't it? Well, I don't know how bad they wanted me in the first place, but uh, the night I broke all the lights on the stage <laughs> with the microphone stand, uh, they said they couldn't use me anymore. So I left and used that as an excuse to really get wild and wound up in the hospital with the, my third time I broke my nose. What was the absolute low point? The absolute lowest point was just before the turnaround in 1967 when I was down near uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee in my Jeep and I decided that that uh, I could never face anybody again. I had. I had gone back on my word with everybody so many times and hurt them and, and lied to them that uh, I thought I'd just crawl off in a cave and, and die. When Elvis Presley died, the nation was stunned. It was shocked to learn the tragic details, the cycle of pills that ate away at his life. When he died, did you think there but for the grace of God in the hands of the Lord? Mm -hmm. I sure did. A lot of us did. We talked about it. They started out together, young men who walked in off the street to the same recording studio in Memphis back in the mid-50s. That's Jerry Lee Lewis on the left, Johnny Cash is on the far right, and Elvis. There's so many that started back in the mid-50s that are gone now, but uh, there but for the grace of God, it was me. There were people that had been supplying me that didn't want to see me straighten up, you know. They had written me off. I mean, some prominent people in the music industry that wanted to, me to go down with them. But uh, my friends and loved ones kept them away. I locked myself in my bedroom out here on Old Hickory Lake, the house that I bought. I was living there alone, and I climbed the walls for about 30 days. When you were on the pills, did you think you were a better singer because of them? Oh, I thought I was invincible. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was indestructible. But you're better now. I broke a lot of bones, yeah. I feel a lot better now. I feel a lot better about my performing the whole thing. Um, I'm 50 years old, and I feel like life has really just begun for me. And I find that every day that I make my daily commitment to him and don't break that commitment, then the day works beautifully if I put my will and make his will be my will. You know, there are one, about one out of every six people, maybe one out of every five people, are prone to be chemically dependent. Something I learned in my hospitalization. 60 million prescriptions of Valium dispensed in 1984 in this country. You can figure one out of six or 10 million of those were dispensed to people who are prone to be chemically dependent. That means if they continue to take that, I'm not going down on Valium especially, but if they continue to take a mood-altering drug, they can become addicted or habituated to it. Valium or the sleeping pills or the uppers or the pain pills, and it can happen quite innocently <clears throat> that we can become habituated to these things. The problem with Christians, or the problem with me as a Christian was that that the mood, the alteration of the mood vexes the spirit of communication and worship and commitment to God. And it's like anything else that can become between you and God as an idol to take the place of, of God. It becomes a God to you. It vexes the spirit of worship and communication and devotion to God. And I just want to caution since this is young people, young youth night, I wanted to caution the young people that are strong in the faith to stay strong in the faith. And if you don't ever have to try pain pills or tranquilizers 
our uppers, for God's sakes, please don't. Because you can become dependent on them. And it's a road to ruin. From then, you see people sleeping under the bridges that have become addicted to drugs and alcohol. Everybody has to bottom out on it once they become addicted and habituated to it. I've heard people say that they felt so bad that uh, they thought they were going to die. I remember a time during my hospitalization that I felt so bad I was afraid I was going to live. I didn't want to feel that way anymore. And I thank God for bringing me out of it and putting me back up on my feet and bringing me back to do the thing I love to do most of all, sing a gospel song for you.